This is my daily walk. It's not much, just a few trees and some sidewalks, but for a very long time, it was really the only thing I did outside the walls of my house. And in a weird way, it became very, very meaningful to me. Latching on to textures and just little objects that I would have never paid attention to before. And on this walk, there's this little scene with a bench. And I just always really liked the way the light would fall and the natural composition. And I've always wanted to do something with this little space. So what does this all have to do with motion capture? More on that later. So for me, as I'm sure is the case for most of you, the last year was a year without filmmaking. It all just kind of stopped. And I decided to start looking for ways to do it on my own, just at home, just to keep my own sanity. And that's when I got really into learning motion capture. With motion capture, you can literally put any character anywhere in any situation. You don't need actors, you can do it on your own. So I started out small, rigging up basic figures in Cinema 4D and just playing around a little bit. And at one point I made this monstrosity. And I wish I could say this was a joke, but there was a point in time where I looked at this and I felt pride. But after that came this guy and this guy, and I decided it was time to make something I would actually be proud of. And all that was was a Turbo Squid model that I just bought and downloaded and played with because I saw it in a famous music video. And uh, that was just what I did a lot of my tests with for quite a long time. And so here we are now, a year into me trying to learn motion capture. And am I good at it? No, not really. Uh, it's a process. I did decide to take everything I've learned so far and try to tell some sort of a story with it. And so I made this short film that is kind of my ode to the daily walk I was talking about before. So one of my favorite things in the world is when a company comes along and they take a product or a concept that used to be out of reach for most people and they bring it into a space where suddenly a lot more people can get their hands on it. This is the Rococo Smart Suit Pro. This is what I use for all of my motion capture. It's a suit that you can put on, it has a whole bunch of different sensors on it and it's really, really easy to use. You can just power it with a USB battery and it connects to your computer via Wi-Fi. And then you can just zip it up, put it on, and you're good to go. 
And in my opinion, that's exactly what Rococo has done with the smart suit. It's relatively affordable, especially considering other methods tend to cost, you know, tens of thousands of dollars. This is like a $2,500 motion capture suit you can just have in your house. You can throw it on whenever you want to do some weird experimentation. I just have mine hanging up in the corner of the room. Sometimes when it's late at night and I look over in the corner, it scares the hell out of me. So when I was making this a little short, I decided I wanted to take away as many layers of difficulty as possible. So I made the main character this mannequin because it's okay if the motion looks a little weird at times because he's a mannequin. It's okay if he walks kind of funny or if his feet don't perfectly move right because there is still some stuff with motion capture where you have to like fine tune things and I, I'm still learning certain parts of that. For example, every once in a while, things like this can happen which you don't really want. And sometimes it's as simple as just the feet not really lining up with the ground when they walk, which can be frustrating. And in the scene at the window, this was going on in the background. Uh, the whole scene, for some reason, had a real long butt. And this one single shot where he sits down on the bench is like one of the hardest things I've ever done. I went through so many versions and there just kept being something wrong with it every time a tracking thing or he wouldn't line up with the bench quite right and I finally got one but it just looked like we were zooming into his crotch and I was getting really really frustrated so I just changed the shot angle entirely I reached a point where I was like okay this is this is it this is the shot <laughs> so I definitely learned this process can take a lot of patience so I started to craft this story about you know literally just something very simple uh, this walk. And so I knew I wanted something to cheer him up, something to happen, some sort of catalyst for his frown to become a smile. And about halfway through the last year, we finally, as a family, we decided, okay, let's go somewhere else. Let's travel. So we went to Colorado, and while we were there, we went to this butterfly garden. So I had just had a bunch of, you know, relatively useless pictures of butterflies sitting on my phone. And then it kind of occurred to me, I was like, wait, maybe those weren't useless pictures. Maybe, maybe I can actually use that for something. So to make the butterflies, I just took the image into Blender and used the knife tool and cut out the wings. If you want to learn how to do that, use this Peter France tutorial linked in the description. And to learn how to animate the butterflies, I just used this Ian Hubert tutorial about moths. So that's also linked in the description. And so lo and behold, after a little bit of experimenting, I had animated swarming butterflies. And so that's where the butterflies came from. And that's one thing I really love about this whole world of CG and VFX and all that sort of stuff. You can kind of like gather things that you come across in life and put it in your work. And so now I have this, this little short that's almost kind of like a time capsule, like a memory of how meaningful going on a walk every day felt for a year. And I have these butterflies that are from uh, the first time I got to go on a trip in a long time. And it was like this beautiful experience. And it just felt really amazing to, to do that again. And you don't have to buy a Rococo suit to get started. You can just download the software and get started experimenting right now. Here's how to try motion capture right now for free. First, you will download and install Blender, which is free. And then you'll go to rococo.com, download Rococo Studio, which is also free. And there you'll also find the Rococo Blender plugin, which is, as you can probably guess, free. And then we'll head over to Mixamo, which is an Adobe product, and it's also free. So Mixamo has a bunch of different characters to choose from. Hey, uh, he looks familiar, doesn't he? 
But you can also download a bunch of different animations and other motion capture type things on Mixamo. But I recommend just downloading a T-Pose just for experimentation purposes. Now open Rococo Studio real quick and there you'll find some sample scenes and just load one up that you like. Let's try this one and you'll just right click on it, hit export and uh, just save it somewhere that you will find it. And now we will head over into Blender. To start go to edit and preferences and then click on add-ons and hit install. Now you'll navigate to where you saved your Rococo Blender plugin and install it. Now import both your Mixamo character and your Rococo file as an FBX. Inside the Rococo plugin, you'll just drop down the retargeting tab and set the source as the Rococo armature. And then you'll set the target as the Mixamo armature. You'll hit build bone list, leave the rest of the settings the same, and then you'll hit retarget animation. And there you go, you've got an animated character and you didn't have to spend a single dime, except your internet or whatever. Over the last year, I came to the realization that I have spent most of my career hesitating on ideas like this, just not doing them. And I'm committed right now, it's a big part of why this channel even exists, but I'm committed to not hesitating. I'm committed to having an idea and just doing it. Just go and don't stop until it's done. Anyways, thanks for taking this motion capture journey with me through my uh, sad sadness. <laughs> I could, do you wanna see like more detailed tutorials of how I pulled off some of these shots? Do you want more motion capture stuff? Should I sell all my gear and start a food truck? Just let me know. How are we feeling? How are we doing guys? We're getting there. We're getting there, we're close. We're getting close to being able to make movies normal, the normal way again. This year, no hesitation. Let's just, let's just go. Thank you.